me, you would definitely receive the same punishment. Because you have to, how can you be unsure? You just anxious, unsure, money water, money water. You are not find out the truth. It's a punishment. It's not for sale. You can't get it by money. Nobody sell it. And once thing is not said, they can't dope it, they can't copy it. But this time, they will get it and they, they will begin to sell it to you. You that fall into the hands of these people, equal punishment God gave to the criminal, it's the same punishment you will receive. Because the Bible says, find out the truth and let the truth do all. And if you not fail to find out the truth, what will happen? Punishment. That is the punishment we receive. If somebody deceive you that, uh, friend, I'm a TV Joshua. And, uh, some people will take a, a phone call and say, hello, I'm TV Joshua. I'm TV Joshua. I want to give you this. I want to give you that. Ah, where will you see me talking now? Don't know. So please, let us be very careful. It's for you. One of these service day, I'm looking for that day. I pray to God that he should, I want God to show me the day. I will start sharing this new money water to everybody. I'll just start it and say, take it, take it, take it, take it. But I don't know when God promised that. Eh? I don't know when God promised that. You, 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 must be, you must be God. You are that God. I say you are that God. You are that Jesus I saw play football yesterday. I mean, that they are greeting me happy Easter. Are we talking of Easter now? I'm not happy Easter. Leave me. I'm talking. <laughs> what are we saying? And they say happy Easter. They say it's today. I say I'm waiting for the day God will allow me to begin to share this money water. They say it's today. You must be God. Huh? Today. Today. Can somebody come out and tell me? The, the... Yeah. Yeah, see, see. <laughs> oh my God. I, I understand. I know you. If I, through your voice, I can see what you are talking about. I, I see that Jesus that played football yesterday. <laughs> Thank you very much. So the coordinator will address you.
is a day set aside by Christians to commemorate resurrection of someone who paid supreme price, supreme sacrifice for your sin. Flogged, tortured, humiliated, and dishumanized before he was brutally murdered. says he responded with forgiveness knowing that his death will accomplish salvation for me the hour of Christ's death was the beginning of his glorification and our redemption can be comforted under the present sorrow, under the present injustice, under the present difficulty and trial without your heart rise and seek the things that are above. To resurrect is to bring back to life peace joy and comfort has risen therefore our heart must also rise and seek the things that are above so that you may be comforted under the present sorrow under the present trial under the present trouble under the present poverty under the present injustice when we talk of resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ we are talking of the rare opportunity he has given to all, let someone say to all, all believers to experience new beginning. The resurrection means to become alive or a new beginning. Why do you seek the living among the dead? 
He is not here, but is risen. Remember what he said to you while he was in Galilee. The Son of Man will be handed over to sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. To resurrect is to bring back to life somebody that had died or something that had been in a state of disuse. His resurrection is our consolation and communion with him by faith in his word. What do I mean? I mean, under the present sorrow, we can be comforted. is transmitted to his followers giving them a glorious new existence his resurrection is the joy to his friends his resurrection is the joy to all true believers his resurrection is the joy to everybody again in the place of pain receive the joy of resurrection in the place of failure receive the success of resurrection in the place of setback and disappointment receive the breakthrough of resurrection in the place of poverty receive the blessing of resurrection Jesus says, Come unto me. All over the world, there is something moving south. It is busy spreading east and west, and it is marching. It is bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the four corners of the earth. This is Emmanuel TV. God with us. Be declare you free from whatever sickness disease in your blood, in your throat, in your kidney, in your tender, in your liver, be declared free in the name of Jesus. Be declared free in the name of Jesus. Whatever you must have taken in your dream, I flood them out in the name of Jesus. Flood them out by the power of Holy Ghost. Begin to flood them out, flood them out, flood them out in the name of Jesus. Prayer. Whatever poison you must have taken, truth, dream, flood them out by the blood of Jesus. Power of Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Flood them out. They was all over the world, receive clearance. Now, it is your turn to use your faith to put a demand on the anointing. Get ready to pray along with Prophet TB Joshua and receive your own miracle in Jesus' name. They was we declare you free from whatever sickness disease in your blood, in your throat, in your kidney, in your tender, in your liver. Be declared free in the name of Jesus. Be declared free in the name of Jesus. Whatever you must have taken in your dream, 
I flood them out in the name of Jesus. Flood them out by the power of Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Begin to flood them out. Flood them out. Flood them out in the name of Jesus. Prayer. Whatever poison you must have taken. Through dream, for them out by the blood of Jesus. La del Espíritu Santo. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Espíritu Santo. For them out. La del Espíritu Santo. Por el sangre de Jesús y la puissance del Santo Espíritu. They wash all over the world. Espectacular. Receive clearance, Recibe. clearance, clearance. Claridad. In the name of Jesus. Health clearance, Claridad. business clearance, Claridad. finances clearance, Claridad. marriage clearance, in the name of Jesus, clearance, 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 clearance. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice. Have you been touched by Jesus Christ by praying along with Prophet TV Joshua on Emmanuel TV? Don't forget to send us your photos or video footage of what happened to you during the prayer for the glory of God. Post your pictures or videos on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using the following hashtags. Pray along with TV Joshua. Distance is not the barrier or touch the screen. Alternatively, you can upload them to our testimony website, i.emmanuel.tv, or send them via email at info at emmanuel.tv with the subject, testimony. Remember, distance is not a barrier to the Holy Spirit. Children of God, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. My name is Copra Yerima Peter Ojo. I am from Edo State by birth. I reside here in Lagos. I serve as a soldier in the Nigerian Army. Praise God. The testimony that I have to share with you this morning is a testimony about a liver infection. Many people believe that liver has no cure, but Jesus has the cure. It all happened back then in the year 2012, when my wife gave birth. I was away for a mission ground in the land of Darfur, when my wife gave birth to my first son. And immediately she gave birth, the second day, a usual thing started happening in my life. My body changed. I couldn't walk well. I couldn't breathe well. And I couldn't even see well. A lot of things started happening in my life. And I couldn't share it with anybody. I was just lying in the hostel. And they have to kind of encourage me that I should visit the hospital for medical checkup. And I couldn't go there. They have to assist me to our MRS inside the mission ground. So when the doctor now discovered that it's a thing they cannot be able to detect, they referred me to our level one hospital in Imiala, which is the transit camp for all military men in the land of Darfur. So I was there when they also carried out some uh, medical examination. They discovered that it's nothing they can be able to detect. They refer me again down to Pakistan Military Hospital, which is level three. And immediately I got to the place. Although I told you I, I couldn't walk, they have to assist me to be there. So it was then that they now carried out some medical tests about my life. What you are seeing here is not a certificate of school. They are certificates of life. Praise the Lord. Please, if you can help me. God bless you. There is one you can see here first. This one indicates all the blood functions, and they discovered that there was no problem, and they have to conduct a test on the liver, because I couldn't know they have a problem of liver then. They now detect that I have liver infection, that it has rise for the normal number to 80. And if it rise from 80 to 90, I will be able to exist again in the world. And immediately the doctor confirmed this test. 
You can see what they still wrote down here, that I couldn't walk where I have a lot of headache, severe headache, pains, dizziness, I couldn't stand. And they have to refer me to a place that they can advance me, either to refer me back to my country. And we were two soldiers that were having that problem. And we were prepared that by Monday, that two of us will be referred to Nigeria. That there is no cure for those kind of sickness. Uh, behold, on, uh, on a faithful day on Sunday, there was this, my colleague, is retired now, worked of uh, 0 to 18. I believe wherever he is now, he's watching the Manor TV because he's a partner. He now said they should, they should bring me to the screen because he had a laptop in the hostel where he do watch live service. He said they should, they should call me, that they should assist me to be there, that the man of God is about to pray for the whole nation, that he want me to join them and lay hand on the screen that he knows something will happen. And the man of God, eventually the man of God was not praying. He said, wherever you are now, lay your hand on the screen. Distance is not a barrier. Connect your faith with me. Whatsoever problem you have, Jesus knows about it. <laughs> and I lay my hand on the screen. He said, I me and he now measured my problem. He said, I speak to your liver, I speak to your bone, I speak to your kidney, whatsoever pain you have, I command the prayer out. I said, Amen. I lay hand. They assisted me. I lay my hand. And after the prayer, they assisted me back to my hunt. I was lying down. Then in the night, something now happened. Amen. I was sleeping. I heard a voice, an echo voice, say, My son, start up. And I, and I woke up from my body. Part of me was still lying down. And I, and I rise up. And I look. I said, ah, Which kind of magic is this? Because I was still seeing part of me on the ground. He said, I created you without problem. Those bodies you are seeing here, I will see two bodies. I will see myself lying, another of myself again lying. He said, one has sickness, and one, the other has no sickness. Which one do you belong to? I said, you created me without problem, without sickness. That is where I belong. He said, okay, lay here. He has no sickness here. And I laid. <laughs> Amen. And I lay there, I woke up. There was no pain in my body. I was very strong. I was very agile. And I look at, in fact, I was shouting in the hall. All the soldiers came, they were asking me, I said, ah, that prayer today has, in fact, God has done it. So they were celebrating with me. Behold, the soldier that we were supposed to be referred to Nigeria, it was only him. That they was not referred to Nigeria. That was the year 2012. But you can see me here today. I'm healthy. People do say, does Emmanuel, Emmanuel Synagogue testimony be dead long? Or uh, is it magic? Or is the man truly a man of God? I am here today to let the world know that yes, indeed, he's a man of God. <laughs> Amen. He never knew me before. He has never seen me. For somebody not to have said, ah, maybe you can see, this is test from Sudan. This is not, and from United Nations, confirmed. It is not even Nigeria. But when I came back, when I shared it with my wife, I said, this is what happened. She said, no wonder, and if I called you, you could talk, you'll be telling me no problem. Let us go and test, because this one you are telling me is a deadly disease. I said, if it's a deadly disease, I could have been here. He said, let us test. Then I went to medical hospital in 44, and those tests were being conducted. And here, the number, which was 80, that the devil was about to die. Here, Jesus gave a life. The number was 33. <laughs> Amen. And the, the battalion I went with was number 33. And Jesus gave me the same number 33 here. Which, Amen. Is, which is a normal range. That which is a normal range. That is how it's supposed to be for a normal human being. Amen. And why I've not been able to come here all this while to share this testimony? Because uh, there was this saying there, don't watch Emmanuel TV. Don't partners with them. You are a pastor, you are this. Don't do this with them. And 
a time came in, I started seeing senior pastors with money stickers. I have seen them with money stickers in their vehicle. Some even have money water. And I said, ah, I am not a Balagba pastor yet. I am just a baby. Since I'm a baby, let me share this testimony so that the world will know disease that devil has said nobody can cure. God can cure it. God can remove the old part and paste it the new one. That was my case. And then let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We give all the glory to God for this wonderful, wonderful testimony. Sir, you have said it all in the light of what Jesus has done for you. What is your advice to our viewers all over the world? Emmanuel, my advice to all the viewers in the world. Number one, we go for all the ministers. I would like to share this to the ministers in the world. Don't say anything against yourselves. Don't condemn yourselves. This race is a race that Jesus has called you. You have to team up together to defeat the Satan. He says something, amen. He says something in John 15, verse 15. He says, Henceforth, I call you no servant, because a servant will not know what a master is doing. I call you friends so that things I do will be made known unto you. So why can't we join hands together and support the man of God and support each other so that more miracles will be happening every day. Secondly, this is for my colleagues. Wherever you are, whether you are in the battlefield, Jesus is there. Always connect yourself with the faith. Pray with the man of God and you will receive your miracle. And at the same time, for those on the sick bed, whether you are having the same problem that man was having then, because it's no more here now, a new person is here. If you are having such problem that the man was having then, connect your faith wherever you are with the man of God today, because he will pray for you, and you will receive your own. And God will see you through in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Escuchamos este maravilloso testimonio de este hombre que además de ser pastor es un militar. Él vino a, a la sinagoga porque tenía una infección en el hígado. Él menciona que su cuerpo sufrió diferentes cambios. Él no podía caminar, no podía comer, pero a través de un amigo en el ejército le recomendó que viera Emanuel TV. En el momento en que este hombre puso la mano en su pantalla, el profeta en una oración masiva mencionó que tocaran donde estaba el dolor. Él en un acto de fe puso su mano en el, donde, estaba, donde estaba el dolor y fue automáticamente sanado de la infección en el hígado. Vemos en pantalla sus reportes médicos del antes y del después. Y le da toda la gloria a Jesucristo porque... A pesar de que él estaba en su iglesia, muchos pastores le recomendaban que no visitara Emanuel TV, que no viera Emanuel TV, pero aún su pastor tenía la calcomanía en su carro y él en un acto de fe decidió venir a la sinagoga, a la iglesia de todas las naciones y recibió su sanidad. Y para la gloria de Dios, hoy en día él muestra que ha sido liberado y recomienda a todos los televidentes que vean Emanuel TV porque Jesucristo es el mismo ayer, hoy y siempre y sigue sanando. Continuamos. Nous venons tout juste d'écouter les témoignages de, de cet homme qui nous vient du Nigeria. Il est un soldat dans l'armée et aussi pasteur. Il souffrait d'une infection de foie. À cause de ce problème, il ne pouvait pas bien respirer ni travailler à cause de la fatigue. Les docteurs n'ont pas pu découvrir la cause de son problème, donc ils l'ont conseillé d'aller voir un plus grand docteur, qu'il a conseillé d'aller dans un hôpital à l'étranger, où ils ont découvert qu'il souffrait d'une infection de foie. Le niveau de liquide dans son foie était très élevé, 80. Normalement, le niveau 80-90, il est impossible de vivre. Donc, un ami dans l'armée l'a conseillé de regarder Emmanuel TV et de prier avec l'homme de Dieu. Donc ils ont décidé de prier ensemble avec l'homme de Dieu et juste à ce moment, l'homme de Dieu a dit « Je parle à ton foie » et il a prié 
juste après avoir prié, il s'est endormi et il a entendu une voix qui lui a dit « Lève-toi ». Il s'est levé et il a réalisé qu'il y avait deux corps sur son lit. Et la voix lui a dit « Quel corps choisis-tu Celui qui est malade ou celui qui est sans malade ?» Et il a dit « Je choisis celui qui n'est pas malade parce que tu m'as créé sans maladie. » Et depuis cela, il s'est réveillé, il se sent fort, il peut bien respirer, il peut bien marcher. Aujourd'hui, il peut tout faire. Il est à nouveau dans son travail. There are numerous fake websites, email addresses, and social media accounts requesting or encouraging for donations in the name of the SCOAN, TB Joshua, and Emmanuel TV. They may claim to be collecting funds to build a SCOAN worship center, Bible college, or orphanage in their respective countries. Others also solicit funds for spiritual items to be sent out. They are fraudsters. There is currently no plan to build or acquire SCOAN premises worldwide. Don't let anyone deceive you. For donations, God has a way of speaking to the hearts of his people for our needs. We never send anyone and can never send anyone. If we need you, partners, we have a way of reaching you through Emmanuel TV, which is our mouthpiece. Following are just a few examples out of thousands of fraudulent announcements. Attention s'il vous plaît, il y a plusieurs sites internet frauduleux, des adresses e-mail et des comptes des réseaux sociaux qui réclament ou qui encouragent à faire des dons dans le nom de la Squan, TB Joshua et de Manuel TV. Ils prétendent collecter des fonds pour bâtir un centre d'adoration pour la Squan, des écoles bibliques ou des orphelinats dans leurs pays respectifs. D'autres sollicitent des fonds pour envoyer des outils évangéliques. Ce sont des fraudeurs. Il n'y a actuellement aucun plan pour bâtir ou d'acquérir un centre d'adoration pour la SQUAN dans le monde entier. Ne laissez personne vous tromper. Pour les dons, Dieu a une manière de parler dans le cœur de son peuple pour nos besoins. Nous n'avons envoyé personne et nous n'enverrons personne. Si nous avons besoin de vous, partenaires, nous avons un moyen de vous atteindre à travers Emmanuel TV, qui est notre porte-parole. 
Voici quelques exemples parmi ces milliers d'annonces frauduleuses. Hay numerosas páginas web falsas, direcciones de correo electrónico y cuentas de redes sociales pidiendo o alentando a dar donaciones en nombre de la SCOAN, TV Joshua y Emmanuel TV. Puede que afirmen estar colectando fondos para construir un centro de culto de la SCOAN, una escuela bíblica o un orfanato en sus respectivos países. Otros también solicitan fondos para artículos espirituales. Son estafadores. Actualmente, no está planeado construir o adquirir un local de la SCOAN en todo el mundo. No permitas que nadie te engañe. Para donaciones, Dios tiene una forma de hablar a los corazones de su pueblo para nuestras necesidades. Nunca enviamos a nadie y no podemos enviar nunca a nadie. Si les necesitamos, socios, tenemos un modo de informarles a través de Manuel TV, que es nuestro portavoz. A continuación, hay tan solo unos pocos ejemplos de entre los miles de anuncios fraudulentos. Jesus, who lived 2,000 years ago. We don't know exactly how children found out the truth about Jesus, but it might have happened something like this. miracles it could all be magic tricks yeah how else could you explain it that's the thing joel i don't have to explain it miracles are wonderful things only god can do you mean like helping blind people see again yeah i don't believe one word of this i do sarah what are you doing here i forgot to feed my donkey and when i heard you talking about jesus i wanted to know what you were saying what would you know about jesus i know a lot My grandmother knows his mother, Mary, and she told me all about him, how he was born and everything. It's a great story, really. Mary was...
was a young girl living in Nazareth. She wasn't married, but she was supposed to marry a man named Joseph. One day, God sent an angel named Gabriel. Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. How can this be? I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of the Most High God. His kingdom will never end. Did the angel scare Mary? If an angel came and talked to me, I'd be really scared. What happened next? No, all men of Nazareth. Let by command. The government made a law that all the men had to go to the city where they were born and register. You know, sign your name on some papers. All men must register forthwith. So Joseph took Mary with him to the town of Bethlehem, where he was born. When they got to Bethlehem, the whole city was very crowded, and the places to stay were full. The only place Joseph could find for them to stay was in a stable. You mean like this one? A lot like this one. And that night, baby Jesus was born. There were some shepherds out on the hills near the stable. They were taking care of their sheep when all of a sudden they saw an angel. This very day in David's town, your savior was born, Christ the Lord. The shepherds went right away to see the baby. He was lying in a manger. Can you imagine? They had to put him in a box like this one I used to feed my donkey. Then, after he was born, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem. They met a man who really loved God, named Simeon. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. God had promised Simeon he would live to see Jesus. Uh. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. This child is chosen by God. May you both be blessed. The baby Jesus would grow up to be God's chosen person to forgive everyone everywhere for all the wrong things they think and say and do. The things God calls sin. So Jesus was a baby, and now he's a man. Wasn't he ever a boy? Sure he was. My grandmother told me that when Jesus was about 12 years old, Mary and Joseph took him here to Jerusalem. Jesus went to the temple and talked with all the leaders and teachers. Whose child is this who asks such questions? He's from Nazareth. We thought he had left with us. Please forgive him his zeal. After that, Jesus went back home with his parents. As he grew up, he became wiser every day. Jesus went to see his cousin, John the Baptizer. John baptized people who wanted to obey God. He also baptized Jesus that day. People who were there heard God's voice from the sky. You are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. Well, what did he do then? He began traveling from town to town, teaching the people about God. Hello. <laughs> Jesus went back to Nazareth, where he grew up. One day, he went to the temple, and the leaders asked him to read from God's book, the scriptures. 
The part of the Holy Scriptures that Jesus read told about God's plan to send Jesus so that people everywhere could live with God forever. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. This passage of scripture has come true today, as you heard it being read. The scripture come true, but only the Messiah can fulfill that promise. We know. But there's more to the story. Jesus went down to the Sea of Galilee. Push the boat out further to the deep water. Then you and your partners let down your nets for a catch. Oh, master, we worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I'll let down the nets. James! John! sinful man. Don't be afraid. I better go. Yeah, I better get going too. Me too. Oh. Bye. See ya. See ya. And where were you, Benjamin? Out with your friends again. Yes, Father. And it was Caleb there. Yes, Father. I've told you many times I don't want you spending time with that boy. But, Father... You know his father believes all those wild stories about Jesus. Why is that wrong? We believe that God will send us a mighty king. Your friend's father believes that someone born in a stable is that king. It's nonsense. But... What if Caleb's dad is right? No, Benjamin, we are not going to discuss this anymore. Yes, sir. He'll prosper in his purpose on Babylon, and his arm will be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken and called him. I have brought him, and he will prosper in his way. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. Listen, wait till you hear what happened today. I was there. <laughs> Jesus was in the temple teaching people about God's love. A huge crowd was packed inside, and there were even more people waiting outside. Everybody wanted to see him. Jesus, please, I beg you to save my only daughter. Sir, have mercy. She's only 12 years old and, and dying. Please, please come with me. Jairus, oh, I'm sorry. Jesus! Your daughter has died. Don't bother the teacher any longer. Don't be afraid. Only believe and she will be well.
give us something to eat. Wow, that really happened? It sure did. You never even know she'd been sick. My dad says that Jesus has friends who do really bad things. He says they're a bunch of sinners. Well, that's true, but that's only because Jesus loves and cares about everyone, no matter who they are. My dad told me about a man named Matthew who collected money from the people paying taxes as they came into the city. Follow me. Matthew is one of the 12 people Jesus chose to be his disciples. They are his best friends and they travel with him everywhere to help teach people about God. There's Simon, also named Peter. Andrew, Peter's brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, of course, Thomas, another James, another Simon, Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot. How can you remember all that? He's very smart. <laughs> you would think so, but that's because you're so stupid. I am not. You're as dumb as your old donkey. Hey, she's my friend, you bully. Who you call a bully, huh? Who? Leave her alone. Oh, yeah, who's going to stop me? Come on. Come on. if we don't clean it. What happened? He got in a fight. I didn't ask you, Leah. Sorry. I got in a fight with Caleb. They were talking about Jesus. He and his friends meet all the time in Sarah's stable. I told you, nothing good comes from all of this talk about Jesus. He is not our king, and he never will be. But, Father, I think he might really be the son of God. That's enough! Aren't you being a little hard on the boy? I don't think so. But it won't matter soon anyway. I've heard there may be a traitor among the so-called followers of Jesus. If that's true, he won't be causing us trouble much longer. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone strikes you on the one cheek, let him hit the other one also. And if someone takes away your coat, let him have your shirt as well. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if someone takes what is yours, do not ask for it back again. Do for others only what you would have others do for you. I'd like to know this man. Do you think he might be the Messiah? What did he mean when he said the Messiah? They talked about it in the temple. Messiah means the promised one. Come on, let's follow it. Keep going, but good, son.
I know who this woman is, Simon. Let me tell you something. There were two men who owed money to a moneylender. One owed him 500 silver coins, the other 50. Neither of them can pay him back, so he cancelled the debts of both. Which one then will love him more? I suppose that it would be the one who is forgiven more. You are right. You see this woman? I came into your home. You gave me no water for my feet. Yet she has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You did not welcome me with a kiss. But since I came, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You provided no olive oil for my head. Yet she has anointed my feet with perfume. I tell you then, the great love she has shown proves that her many sins are forgiven. But whoever is forgiven little shows only a little love. Your sins are forgiven you. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. out to sow his seed and as he scattered the grain some of it fell by the path and was trodden on and the birds of the air devoured it and some fell on rocky ground and when the plants sprouted they withered away because they had no moisture and some seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up with the plants and choked them and some seeds fell in good soil and the plants grew and bore grain, 100 grains each. This is what the parable means. The seed is the word of God. The seeds that fell along the path stand for those who hear. But the devil comes and takes the message away from their hearts in order to keep them from believing and being saved. The seeds that fell on rocky ground stand for those who hear the message and receive it gladly. But they have no root. They believe only for a while. And when the time of testing comes, they fall away. The seeds that fell among thorns stand for those who hear. But the worries and riches and pleasures of this life crowd in and choke them. And their fruit never ripens. <laughs> 